Attention Spartans! Today, we embark on a journey to install Arch Linux, a powerful and versatile operating system that will leave Microsoft Windows in the dust like a grunt caught in a warthog's tire treads. Listen closely and follow my instructions, and you will have a system that is both powerful and secure. First, we must prepare our minds and bodies for this challenge. We must be strong, focused, and unyielding in the face of adversity. We must shed our old ways like a Spartan shedding their armor after a victorious battle. We will leave behind the Covenant spyware and malware of Windows and embrace the freedom and power of Linux. First, you will need to download an Arch Linux ISO from their website. Then you must burn the ISO onto a USB stick using a tool such as Bellina Etcher or Rufus. Insert the USB stick into your computer and reboot it. As your computer starts up, hit that Enter, Delete or F12 key to get into the BIOS screen. This is where we make the magic happen. Configure your computer to boot into the USB stick and get ready to start the mission. Our first objective is to run the command pacman-sy arch install. Once you've done that, type arch install and hit enter. This is where the real challenge begins. The first step is selecting your language. Use your arrow keys to highlight your preferred language and then press enter to confirm. Next, select your keyboard layout, mirror region and locale language in the same fashion. Here comes the tricky part. We're going to format the hard disk. Select the Drives option with the arrows and hit Enter. Target the hard drive you want to house Linux on by pressing Enter. Heed my warning, the chosen hard drive's data will be completely erased. On to the next objective. Highlight the disk layout and select it. Now, select Option 2. Wipe all selected drives and use a best effort default partition layout. Confirm with Enter. On the following screen, select Butter FS and press Enter. Here comes a crucial decision, Spartan. On the screen that pops up asking, would you like to use Butter FS sub-volumes with a default structure? Choose Yes. This will allow you to install Time Shift later to execute rollbacks. When asked, would you like to use Butter FS compression? Choose Yes. It will grant you additional hard drive space without compromising your system's performance. Breathe, Spartan. The most difficult part is over. As for disk encryption, that's up to you. If this computer will be handling classified intel, then encrypt away. But if not, feel free to skip this step and save yourself some time. And don't forget about the bootloader. Make sure to swap out the default system D bootloader for the Grub bootloader. Trust me, it's a change you won't regret. And finally, let's talk about swap. Press that enter key, and when it asks, would you like to use swap on ZRAM? Answer with a resounding, yes. Swap may seem like a minor detail, but it's a vital part of the Linux kernel's memory management system. So don't overlook it. Now it's time to make your mark on this new system. Choose a strong and memorable name and password for your host name, root password, and user account. These will be your keys to the kingdom, so make sure they are worthy of a Spartan strength. Under profile, choose the desktop option. This will take you to a screen with a plethora of options. Choose your armor wisely, as it will be your ally in the battles to come. As a Spartan, I know the importance of making informed decisions. For a newly initiated warrior like yourself, I would recommend choosing either the KDE Plasma or GNOME desktop environments. These interfaces are intuitive and customizable, allowing you to navigate your new operating system with ease. KDE Plasma is like the Mjolnir armor. It's highly customizable and versatile, allowing you to fine-tune it to your preferences. It's like having a whole arsenal of weapons and gadgets at your disposal. By default, it may remind you of the sleek design of a Spartan's armor, but you can customize it to look and feel however you like. On the other hand, GNOME is like the standard-issue ODST armor. It's not as customizable, but it's incredibly reliable and stable. It's like having a battle-tested squad mate by your side. GNOME takes cues from Mac OS, but it's still its own unique environment with a sleek and modern design that's sure to impress. All right, we're making some serious progress here. Let's get your graphics and audio sorted out. If you're packing an AMD card, you can just sit back and relax, select the AMD ATI open source option, and you're good to go. But if you're rocking an NVIDIA card, pay attention here. Do not select the open source driver for NVIDIA. 
Trust me, it won't do your graphics card any favors. Opt instead for the proprietary driver to get the best performance out of your rig. Moving on to audio, I recommend going with the default pipe wire. It's a no-brainer. Simpler than Pulse Audio, more modern, and fully backwards compatible with legacy Pulse Audio applications. Easy. Now, it's time to select your Linux kernel. The standard Linux kernel is optimized for servers and enterprise hardware. But you aren't running a server, you're running a desktop. You want to choose the Linux Zen kernel. It's optimized for desktop usage and will keep your graphical environment running smoothly even when RAM usage is high. With the Zen kernel by your side, you'll feel like a Spartan warrior, ready to conquer any challenge that comes your way. So, highlight the Zen kernel, enter an asterisk by pressing space, and confirm your selection by pressing enter. Next, Spartan, it's time for network configuration. You'll want to choose Use Network Manager for a painless and headache-free network setup. You can use the other options if you want to test your luck against the flood. Now, as a seasoned warrior, you know the importance of having all the necessary tools at your disposal. So, make sure to enable the multi-lib repository under Optional Repositories. This will allow you to download and use packages that are compiled for 32-bit instruction sets, essential for running certain applications like the Halo Master Chief Collection on Steam using the included Proton compatibility layer. We're almost done, soldier. Before you proceed with the installation, it's recommended to double-check the Additional Packages option. By selecting it and hitting Enter, you'll have the chance to input the names of packages you want to be installed from the get-go. In case you're not familiar with the term, a package is what applications come in when you install them on Linux. If you're planning on gaming, consider adding Steam to your list. For an office suite, LibreOffice Fresh has got you covered. If you're looking for audio editing, go for Audacity. Or if you need a photo editing application, GIMP is a solid choice. For video editing, trust KDEN Live to get the job done right. Finally, highlight the install option and press enter. Wait about five to 10 minutes and you'll soon have a freshly installed Arch Linux system. When you have completed the installation, you will be ready to dive into the world of Arch Linux. As you navigate the system, remember the importance of maintenance and updates. As I always say, keep your system locked and loaded with the latest updates. Use the command sudo pacman-syu to stay up to date and ahead of any potential threats. Now, to install an application on Arch Linux, you have a few options at your disposal. You can use the user-friendly interface of KDE Discover or the GNOME Software Center if you're feeling soft. But if you're a true Spartan, you'll use the command line and type sudo pacman-s package name to get the job done efficiently and with precision. Now remember this, as a Spartan, you must never engage in partial upgrades. Under no circumstances, with few exceptions, such as updating your keyring, should you run the command sudo pacman-s y, as this can result in a disastrous outcome for your system. Instead, always use pacman-syu to ensure a full upgrade. Partial upgrades are not supported. If you wish to learn more about system maintenance, I recommend consulting the system maintenance article on the Arch Wiki. It provides detailed explanations for why certain practices, such as avoiding partial upgrades, are important to follow to maintain a stable and secure system. Take the time to study the article thoroughly as it will help you to better understand the underlying principles of maintaining an Arch Linux system. For additional software and programs, look no further than the AUR, where you can find a vast array of user-generated packages. Install Yay from GitHub to access the AUR and use it to install TimeShift, a powerful tool that allows you to take snapshots of your system, ensuring that you never lose important data or settings. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. But as long as you stay vigilant and follow these tips, you'll be ready for whatever challenges come your way in the world of Arch Linux.